All right, here's another video. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm about to tell y'all what happened with my record deal. How I lost a $5 million record deal. You all know what happened? Hating ass niggas who never had shit, throwing dirt on my name, salt on my name, costed me a $5 million deal. I never did nothing to nobody. Anybody that knows me, growing up, I was always solid. I never tried to rob nobody. I was never stealing from nobody. I never tried to fuck none of my homies, girls. I was always solid. I always just stood on principles and business. Feel me? And growing up, for some weird fucking reason, motherfuckers always hated on me, blood. Always. Always, always, always. I always had some dirty ass nigga hating on me. And it's just funny that when you fast forward, like from my life as a kid to the person I am today, how I signed the deal, how everybody was rapping back where I was from. None of them niggas ever made it. Them niggas is bitches. Them niggas suck. Them niggas eat a dick. None of them niggas ever made it. But I made it. I have made it. Do you know how mad niggas was when I made it? You know how many people felt entitled when I made it? You know how many people felt like it should have been them? But you know what I realized? It could never be y'all. And the reason it was me was because I always moved pure heartedly. I never hated on the next man. I never threw shade. I never, I never did nothing out of my character that I wasn't supposed to do. But niggas always did that shit to me. And it'd be the same motherfuckers screaming out they was real. It'd be the same niggas now posting shit about being a real nigga. How, blood? How? How are you real? And so naturally, I had a chip on my shoulder when I blew up. You know, I had a chip on my shoulder. I just felt like, I just felt like niggas had to feel the pain I felt for them last couple years when I was trying to come up and nobody was trying to help me. You feel me? So, I ended up signing a deal. You know, I dropped Love Blast. I had no support, by the way, when I dropped that shit. Nobody from where I'm from supported it. But everybody across the world supported it. You know? And, you know, I ended up blowing up, signing a deal to L.A. Reid. I didn't even... I didn't even have the, 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 the choice of signing to L.A. Reid. I ended up signing a deal to this nigga named... Uh, uh, no, I signed a management deal to this nigga named Jay Mogul. This is the first time saying his nigga name. I don't give a fuck. Jay Mogul. His name's Josh. Go look him up on Instagram. He's the manager of Lil Mosey and Smoke Perp. This nigga promised me so much, bro. And he let me on. You know, I ended up signing my deal. He says that I was, um, he says that, oh, um, like, I needed his help to sign a deal. I was going to sign a deal regardless. I was popping. But I didn't know that at that moment. And when I signed my deal, he was supposed to be the manager. He was supposed to put the product together. And, you know, I'm going to look like I'm throwing some of, the, some of the blame on other people. But a lot of it does go on me, you know, because I shouldn't have been so emotional. I was an emotional-ass person. So, so me dealing with... Pride and emotions instead of dealing, instead of thinking business minded, that shit fucked me up, blood. But it's just like, what the fuck do you expect? You know, but I gotta take full responsibility because at the end of the day, it was my name on them papers. It was, it was, they signed Skinny from the Nine. You feel me? They signed David. They didn't sign nobody I had around me. So this shit all fall back on me, blood. And you know, people want to know what happened to the million dollars, blood. You know what happened to that million dollars? I was supposed to get five. You know, I ended up getting one. You know what the fuck happened with that mill? I'll tell you, since niggas think they know everything, bro. So peep this. A million dollars, got to pay taxes on it. I didn't know that at that moment. So I ended up getting a crib in L.A. for a year. That was like 120000 So boom, take that. How much I'm left? Like 900000 right? Boom. I probably spent 100000 on jewelry, bitches, partying, you know, taking care of my homies, you know, paying for everybody's flight, paying for everybody's food, uh, you know, renting cars, you know, just having a ball. So what that, that leaves me down with shit like 800, right? 
I then get in trouble for the kidnapping. Niggas don't know this, bro. Niggas, nobody knows this. And niggas can say what they want, bro. I was a real nigga stood on business on that situation, too. With the kidnapping, I got arrested with who? My dad, my brother, and my security guard. Plus me, that's four people. I ended up getting a lawyer, right? Thinking back on it now, I didn't have to. You know, I could have beat that situation with one lawyer. But you know what I did? I got four lawyers for everybody. Guess how much every lawyer was? Guess. Guess. Guess, 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 guess. Like 70000 a piece. So do the math. 70, 70, 70, 70. I don't even know what that is. But that shit probably leave me at like 800, 7, 6, 5. Probably leave me around like 400000 400000 Now guess what? Taxes, as soon as I get out, swing back my way. Now I got to pay half of the money of the meal that I had. So do the math, bro. What's half... Nigga, that shit, they wanted like 600000 400000 off the taxes. So, nigga, if I'm left with four, taxes come around. Nigga, we did, you know, writing shit off and shit like that. Yo, bro, I was probably left with like 60000 bro, from my own pocket at the end of the day, bro. Real shit. And if I could rewind time back, bro, I would, bro. But you know what happened with me and L.A. Reid? L.A. Reid promised me. A Cole Bennett video, a feature from Chris Brown, um, what else? Um, future, uh, I was supposed to be in the mix, nigga, I never got in the mix, bro. I got that Fetty Watt feature, guess who did that? Me, not L.A. Reid. PNB Rock feature, me, not L.A. Reid. You know what also fucked me up, though? I never got the chance to go on tour, because... I ended up trying to, I ended up being, once again, a real nigga, bro. This nigga, 24 hours, bro. 24 hours, yes, nigga. The nigga that sings and shit. This nigga wanted me on his tour, right? I was so excited to even, but this is also, this goes back to the management, bro. Because the manager, when this nigga disappeared, oh, I've been looking for you for a tour. Like, I'm trying to get you to go on tour with Lil Uzi or somebody. I mean, all right, whatever. That's what you say, bro. But at that time, boy, this nigga's disappeared, not saying shit, not communicating. What I'm doing? Shit, I ended up running the 24 hours. 24 hours going to tell me, oh, bro, go on tour with me, me, you, and Dice Soho. Bro, I was so more popping than 24 hours. And no expense to... 24 hours don't even talk to me no more, so I really don't give a fuck. But the shit with Dice Soho, Dice Soho, that's my man. So I'm not going to say nothing negative about him. But I was so much more popping at that time. Why do, looking back on it now, why did I say I was going to go, do you know the crazy part? I said I'm going to go on tour with him. My label was actually like investing to it, setting it up. This nigga going to cancel the tour. We was planning on that tour for three months. That was going to be like, 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 you know, like, why the fuck did I agree to go on tour with you and you cancel it? Like, do you know what that did to my career? Like, do you know, bro? Do you know what that did to my career? Real shit, bro. That shit stunted my growth, bro. Because while we was preparing for your tour, I could have been actually going on a tour where the fans and everybody could have gravitated to me and met me in person. Why the fuck did I say I was going to go on tour with you? And why the fuck did you cancel it? And then at the end of the day, I asked this nigga 20 for a feature. This nigga can't even give me a feature. I told this nigga connect me with Ty Dollar Sign probably like last year. Nigga couldn't even do that. Nigga, you fumbled on me, bro. All these people, bro, fumbled my shit, gang. 24 did connect me with PNB Rock, though. And that's one thing that, like, I appreciate. I, you connected me with PNB, I appreciate that shit, bro. But, bro, that shit with the tour, bro, that shit fucked me up, bro. That shit really fucked me up. Believe it or not, that shit fucked me up. And being a new artist, while, while you're hot, you, shit like that can't be fucking up. So... That started happening. Then, obviously, the fucking snitching allegations. That shit made me look like a fucking weirdo. But the snitching allegations now had me beefing with the whole fucking world. And you know what's crazy? When the snitching allegations came out about me, it was the biggest thing in the world. Like, like this nigga's a snitch. Look how many niggas snitched, bro. Look how many niggas snitched. Where's that same energy, bro? Where is it, bro? Where is it? Tell me. Finesse two times. Nigga... Allegedly, nigga, uh, who else? Fucking, um, Gunna, nigga, uh, who else? Nigga, the nigga, uh, Nipsey Hussle's big homie, the cowboy nigga, uh, who else? 
Bro, mad niggas told, bro, and everybody, when it was a big deal when it was me, nigga. Me. Me. A nigga that never gang banged in his life, never took that oath to the streets. Nigga, I done punched niggas in they shit. Yeah, bro. I done, I done, I done, I done tucked some weed before. I done, I done stole from the store. I done, I done tucked a pistol before, nigga. But I ain't no fucking gang member, nigga. Nigga, I thought that shit was corny growing up. All my friends started gang banging. I thought that shit was the corniest shit in the world, nigga. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to rap. I wanted to rap. Not gang bang. I wanted to rap. The fuck? So, nigga, all that shit ended up happening, bro. And then one day, one day I get a call from L.A. Reed's lawyer. And they was like, you know what? We're going to let you go. Oh, the Evil World Project ended up dropping. And they didn't help me promote that shit at all. Like, you know, that was my fault, though, because I rushed the project. But I rushed the project because I was running low on money. And I was supposed to re-up another million. So, yeah, I rushed the project. But, nigga, I had no guidance, bro. I had no guidance, bro. And once again, that's not an excuse. This shit is all my fault. You know, I carry the weight. I carry it, bro. But I just feel like... I just feel like... It wasn't supposed to go that way. You know, I felt like I was doomed from the start. Feel me? Like, I didn't get none of the support half of these niggas got, bro. And, nigga, my music was good, bro. Love Blast was good. Back when I was broke was good. Evil World Project was good. At that time, that was what was hot. Like, nigga, I was supposed to be up there with Skies, nigga, and Mosey. And, nigga, instead I was down there with Kid Boo and Icy Narco. And the fuck, nigga? Them niggas don't. Them niggas wasn't. Making music how I was making music, bro. Them niggas ain't. Come on, bro. How dare y'all categorize me in that with them niggas, bro? And that shit was. <sighs> Man, bro. I just feel like, like, nigga, it wasn't. It wasn't supposed to go down that way, bro. But I ended up getting a call, bro. They was like, yo, um, you know, um, L.A. Reid said you're free to go. You don't owe no money. Take that as a blessing that you're not owing any money. And we wish you best on your endeavors. Boom. Never spoke to them niggas ever again. They gave me a million dollars. Word. But guess what? That's just a tax write-off, blood. You ain't take no loss, bro. That shit ain't come out of your pocket. You didn't see me. They, they done see me fucked up. They done see me, nigga, on my last, bro. Ain't nobody reach out to me. Ain't nobody throw me an opportunity. Nigga. Niggas ain't. You feel me? And, you know, to do that to me, like, we didn't even have a big fallout, bro. Like, me and L.A. Reed probably talked, like, four times our whole whole thing. Nigga, they knew I got locked up for the kidnapping. What they do? They didn't send no money for that lawyer, bro. You're a fucking, L.A. Reed, you're a fucking millionaire, bro. I had one mil. You had millions. Nigga couldn't pay for my lawyer or something, bro. Like, like niggas didn't want to do nothing, bro. Nothing. They didn't want to pay for features. They didn't want to do nothing, bro. Like, this shit, this shit just crazy, bro. This shit is crazy. But if y'all want to know more about this story, like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm out. Peace.